After hanging in agony on the cross for hours, Jesus cried out, It is finished, and he surrendered his spirit to God. Despite his sadness, Joseph of Arimathea, a man who was secretly a disciple of Jesus, knew that to ensure Jesus had a proper burial, he had to do it before the quickly approaching Sabbath. Grief-stricken, Joseph went before Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor, to ask if he could remove Jesus' body from the cross. After Pilate gave him permission, he and Nicodemus went to the cross with a large amount of myrrh and aloes to anoint Jesus' body for burial. Together, Joseph and Nicodemus carefully wrapped Jesus' body in strips of linen with burial spices in accordance with Jewish tradition. Near the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden where a tomb had been cut out of the rock, something only wealthy people could afford. This tomb belonged to Joseph, and no one had yet been laid to rest there. It was in this tomb that Joseph and Nicodemus laid the body of Jesus. Before they left, they rolled an enormous stone in front of the tomb's entrance, sealing it shut. Before the sun had risen on Sunday morning, Mary Magdalene gathered the spices and perfumes she had prepared to complete the burial customs for Jesus and made her way to the tomb. When she arrived, she discovered the giant stone had been rolled away and the tomb was empty. Deeply distressed by what she had seen, she ran as fast as she could to tell the disciples Peter and John what had happened. They've taken our Lord's body, and we don't know where, Mary exclaimed. After hearing Mary's account, Peter and John sprinted to the tomb. John arrived first, but he did not enter the tomb. Without hesitation, Peter walked into the tomb and noticed that the strips of linen that Jesus had been wrapped up in were laying empty in a pile and the burial cloth that was placed over his head and face was neatly folded next to them. As John entered the empty tomb, he didn't fully understand what had happened, but he believed that Jesus had risen from the dead. Puzzled by what they had seen, Peter and John returned to their homes. Too upset to return home with Peter and John, Mary Magdalene remained at the empty tomb. As she wept, she looked up through her tears into the tomb, and she saw two angels in dazzling white robes. They were sitting where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and one at the foot. Seeing Mary's tears, the angels asked, Woman, why are you crying? Still sobbing, Mary replied, They have taken my Lord away, and I don't know where they have put him. As Mary turned away from the angels to make her way home, she saw a man had been standing behind her. But this was no ordinary man. It was Jesus. Somehow Mary did not recognize Jesus. She thought he was the gardener. Jesus asked Mary, Why are you crying? Who are you looking for? Mary, still thinking he was the gardener, begged him, If you have taken him away, please tell me where so I can get him. Then Jesus called Mary's name, and suddenly she recognized that the man was Jesus. She exclaimed, Teacher, and fell to her knees to worship at his feet. Jesus told Mary to go tell the disciples. After hearing Mary's report of what happened at the tomb and that she had seen Jesus, the disciples gathered together behind locked doors afraid of what the Jewish leaders might do to them. Suddenly Jesus appeared among them in the locked house and said, Peace to you. The disciples were overjoyed to see Jesus with their own eyes. After Jesus had shown them the wounds in his hands and his side, he told the disciples that they would continue his mission, going throughout the world and preaching God's love.